The ARC communication system is a solution that takes you from wherever you're at right now in your communication to wherever you want to get to. And the reason that ARC can do that is because it's built in a very flexible way. There are different components and different modules in the ARC system so that you can focus on things and get there one step at a time. So let's take a quick look at how the ARC system works. And the very first component of the ARC system is the accept and image process. This is really about understanding where you're at right now and orienting yourself within the communication. The next part is the fast results process. So this is about defining exactly what the result is and also changing some mindsets that you might have to enable you to much more consistently achieve results. The next thing that I want to look at in more depth right now is the area of communication. Because if we know where we're at right now, and we know where we want to get to, and we have the right mindset to get there, then we need a vehicle that will allow us to move over to the result. And that vehicle is your communication. So the vehicle in the art communication system that does that is the solar communication model. And SOLAR obviously is an acronym, and there are different pieces to the model, different steps that you need to go through for every single com communication that you ever make. And the first step in this, I think, is something which most people never progress beyond a very basic level at. However, if you do really commit to this, and you do really become more excellent at this, then everything you say will be much more impactful, and your voice will have much more weight. And what I'm talking about here is understanding all of the different things that are involved in speaking. And in order to do that, we need to break speaking down a little bit more because it's actually uh, quite a complex behavior that we do. Although it's something that we learn very young, so it becomes very unconscious for us very quickly. And one of the things which people don't pay attention to when they speak is the speed with which they speak. Because if I speak from this sort of level, then it's fairly easy for people to process my words. But if I speak much faster like this, then suddenly there are far too many words and some people won't be able to keep up. Or if I speak right down here, then some people will get bored very quickly and switch off. So it's much better to speak more in the middle so that people have a chance to process your words, but also people who prefer it when you speak slowly. Don't get put off by you speaking too fast. The next thing that's important to focus on is your tone. Your tone is also the, the pitch of your voice, if you like. And you can have a very high-pitched voice up here with a high tonality, or you could have a very low-pitched voice here with a low tone. Or you could have something that's more in the middle again. And what's interesting about the speed and the tone of your voice is that they are actually related by one common factor, which is where you're speaking from. So right now I'm speaking from around about here, but if I speak from down here, automatically the tone goes down and also the speed of my voice goes down. And then when I speak from up here, the tone goes up and the speed goes up as well. So try this just for a moment. Put your hand right here, just below your breastbone, and say the word A, 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 and feel how it resonates in this area. Then put your hand up here and say the word A, A, A. Notice how much clearer it sounds when it's up here. And then finally put your hand just here and say the word A, A, a. And notice how much sharper it appears when you're talking from your throat. So these are the two areas of using your voice from the solar model. But there is more to it than that because obviously your voice alone is not enough. You need to communicate using words. So there are different concepts of how you can use words in communication. And I think one of the more interesting and one of the easier ones to get to grips with to begin with is the idea of sensory language. So this is different senses that you have. So hearing, eyesight, touch, feeling, all having different dialects, if you like, different words that go with each one of those senses. So if I say to you, well, just picture this for a moment, or how does that sound to you? Or do you feel like that would be a good idea? 
then these words obviously talk about different sensory experiences. And it's important that you notice which words the person you're speaking to is using and you use the same words. Because if they've gone inside and they're making pictures in their head and you're talking to them about feelings, then obviously you're not going to be aligned and you're not going to communicate very well. But if you're both talking about pictures, then you'll communicate much more effectively. The next thing that could be useful to you would be where you put the emphasis or the stress in your sentence. There are different places that you could put it. You could put it on different words. And even within a single word, you could change the emphasis or the stress. So a good example of this would be questions, statements, and commands or instructions. So I'm just going to take one word and I'm going to say it in these three different ways. So firstly, I'm going to say the word really, really. And it's just totally flat. I'm just saying really. And it has no particular meaning. However, when I say, really? Now that's a question. And it's pretty universal across most cultures that when the pitch or the tone goes up at the end, it's a question. And one that's less well known, but equally powerful and perhaps more powerful is when the tone goes down. So if I say, really? then that is a command or an instruction. And if you have young children, you'll probably be familiar with this. If they've ever said to you, oh, please, can we just stay up a few minutes longer? No, you have to go to bed now. Really? Yes, really. See, in that situation, it is most definitely a command to go to bed. Another place that you could put the emphasis or the stress within your sentence would be somewhere that's not necessarily in the end of the sentence, but more in the middle. And I've just chosen a couple of examples of the types of words that you might want to stress. And they are adjectives and adverbs. And the reason that you would want to stress the adjective or the adverb is that because when you do, the resistance will go on the adjective or the adverb rather than on the thing that follows it. So if I say, oh, we had a fantastic trip in Italy, the other person is much more likely to query whether or not the trip was really that fantastic rather than whether or not I really went to Italy. So if you wanted to say, it really delivers tremendous value for money, then the person would have to accept that it delivers value for money in order to process the adverb of tremendous and decide whether or not it really was tremendous. But they still have to accept value for money. Very powerful techniques that you can start using straight away.